So that was LSTM and GRUs. Now the issue is that I have given you a very intuitive explanation that why selectively read, write and forget should work. But we have not actually formally proven or even given an intuition for with these sets of equations how are we sure that the gradients will flow back. Right? We introduced a bunch of equations. Remember in the case of LSTMs or sorry in the case of RNNs the problem was because of the recurrent connections. Right? Because you had these recurrent connections this W which was the recurrent parameter right which was connecting cell state ST minus 1 to cell state ST. This was repeatedly appearing in your gradients right and that was causing the problem. Because then you had this multiplicative factor lambda into W and then if you compute the and this was from raised to T. So then if you compute this magnitude then if the magnitude of W blows up then the whole thing will explode. If the magnitude of W vanishes then the whole thing will vanish right. That is the problem that we had. So this was because of the recurrent connections. Do we have recurrent connections in LSTMs or GRUs for that matter? Do we have recurrent connections? Yes or no? Yes. So then that problem could still occur right. I mean if you had at the crux of the problem for the vanishing gradient was this recurrent uh, connection which is getting multiplied and hence leading to problems. But we still have recurrent connections in the case of LSTMs also. Then why should things become any easier in this case? How many of you get the question? How many of you can give me the answer? Selectively? That is a good answer. So can you think of what is happening here? So first thing that we are going to do now, so I will go on to the next module where I am going to give you the intuition for what is happening and then we will do a slightly in fact a rigorous proof of why it actually solves the vanishing and exploding gradient problem. Okay. So let us look at the intuition first. How LSTMs avoid the problem of vanishing gradients? I am only focusing on vanishing gradients. Exploding gradients are actually easier to deal with. Why? What can you do? What are we interested in when we compute a gradient? Direction. So if the magnitude is very large what can we do? Just normalize it and restrict it to be a certain magnitude. So that is known as gradient clipping. So exploding gradients in that sense is still not a big problem. But vanishing gradients is because if it vanishes you cannot do anything. Yeah, because you could think of it that you already have a learning rate which is getting multiplied with the uh, vector, the gradient. Now in addition to the learning rate which was anyways clipping the norm of the gradient, right. So you are doing an explicit clipping also. So it is just like a additional learning rate in that sense, right, okay. So here is the intuition and then we will go to the more rigorous stuff, not in this class probably. So during forward propagation, the gates control the flow of information, right. The gate decides how much of ST minus 1 should be passed to ST, okay. And they prevent any irrelevant information from being written to the next state. Similarly during back propagation, the gates will regulate the flow of information. So what I mean by that is that if at a certain state you have computed ST is equal to FT into ST minus 1 plus IT into S tilde T, right. So this gate is actually deciding how much information flows in the positive direction, okay. And suppose this gate value was 0.5. So only 0.5 of this information from ST has been carried on to ST minus 1, okay. Now during back propagation what is the derivative of ST with respect to ST minus going, going to be partial derivative? It is going to be FT. Think of ST and uh, ST minus 1 as single variables like I mean no n dimensional variables. Then just FT. Of course you are forgetting that what kind of a network is this? Ordered network right. So you cannot treat S tilde T as a constant because S tilde T also somewhere depends on ST minus 1 okay. But let us just assume that maybe this vanishes and that is the worst case assumption right because I do not want it to vanish but I am assuming that the second term vanishes. But even then with the first term I will have a gradient which is proportional to the gate. Why is that fine? So remember that I am not making an easy assumption I am making a worst case assumption. This is not favorable to me. I am saying that the second term vanishes and I do not want it to vanish but I am just trying to prove that even in the worst case when the second term vanishes you still have this gradient FT from the first term, right. And why is that good? Why is that okay? 
because FT decides how much flew in the forward direction and it is also deciding how much goes back in the backward direction. So, it is a fair regulator which says that if I pass on only this much information in the forward direction then during backward pass also I should only make it responsible by this much ok. Now, let us look at a situation where you had F1, F2, F3 up to Ft ok and all of these gates were 0.5. Now, 0.5 seems like a reasonable value, but when you have 0.5 raised to t and t is a large value, what is going to happen? This quantity is going to vanish. So, what is happening is that S1 contribution to st in the forward direction itself had S1's contribution to st in the forward direction itself was had already vanished, right? Because it was continuously getting multiplied by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So, it is like this Chinese whispering problem, right? So, this guy said something. The next, next guy added noise, the next guy again added noise and so on till the time it reached the tth guy this information was completely lost. So, in the forward pass if S1 did not contribute to ST in the backward pass should I make it responsible for the crimes of ST? No. So, what is happening in the backward pass? Again the gradients are getting regulated by the same forget gates. So, again in the backward pass you will have a situation that by the time the gradient reaches S1 it would be 0.5 raised to and that is fine, it is going to vanish, but that is ok because even in the forward pass it had vanished. So, let it vanish in the backward pass also. So, this kind of vanishing is ok. So, this is just the same thing written in words. So, if the state at time t minus 1 did not contribute much to the state at time t because f t was tending to 0, right. Then during back propagation the gradients flowing into s t minus 1 will also vanish because again during back propagation the gradients will get multiplied by f t and they will vanish. But this kind of vanishing gradient is fine, this is fair. Because if you did not contribute in the forward direction, why should I help you, held you uh, hold you responsible in the backward direction, right? So, that is fair. So, the key difference from RNNs is that the flow of gradients is now controlled by gates which do the same regulation in the forward pass as well as the backward pass, right? So, only if you contributed to something, you will be held responsible. If your contribution vanished, your responsibility in the backward pass will also vanish, right? So, that is the intuition and we will next see a, a proof for this. A proof actually just builds on the intuition, but I will just make it more formal in terms of introducing the notations and so on. So, that probably will do it in the next class, okay.